Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we're going to be addressing a question we regularly get which is about how do we count the number of occurrences in Excel. So this could be for either counting numbers or counting text to derive the total uh, count for how many times that value appears in a given range. So we're going to address both uh, of these. So we're going to look at numbers, so the table you can see on the left, and we'll look at text, the table you can see on your right. We'll look at them separately, but we'll start with numbers. So as you can see, for example, we've got a number of random numbers going from the number one to the number five in this table. And what we want to know is how can we put a formula or a count formula to be more specific in Excel so we can understand how many times a particular number appears. So to do that, what we've got is there's two pieces of criteria and we're going to make this uh, formula dynamic so that we can change the particular number we're looking for uh, as and if we choose to. So in the number box here, I'm just going to put in a starting number of the number two. So this is the number we want to count uh, how many times it appears. So in our count formula, we can start entering our function. And that function we're going to be using for this is count if. So sounds quite straightforward. And basically what it means is count if this value is present or count if this number is present. So all we need to do is do our equal sign and enter count if, as you can see there, open our brackets. And if I just go back before I open that, you can see we've got a prompt here. So count if will count the number of cells within a range that meet a given condition. So exactly what we require. You'll see another one on the screen there for count ifs. So the same thing, just with an S at the end. We won't be touching on that, but we'll do that in another video. Basically, it just means we can apply more than one criteria into our count function. But not to get hung up on that, we're sticking with count if. So we need to enter our brackets or open bracket. And then we can enter that the range we require. So when we're doing this count, we can either do, we can look at just the first column like so by clicking and dragging, or you could type those cell references into the function yourself, uh, obviously with the colon there in the middle to separate the first and the last cell within that range. Or we can do a horizontal, so we could do that row there. As you can see, we just now selected in row six. Or as we're going to do an example, we can select the whole term table. Uh, so we've got all the information there. So we'll find out how many times our number will appear in this overall range. Once we've been selected, all we then need to do is do a comma. And as with our prompt on the screen, you can see we've populated the range. We've now moved on to criteria. So the criteria for us is going to be uh, our number. So we could either enter a number in here. So put the number two. Or alternatively, as we're going to do, we're going to reference where our number is stored in that cell. So for us, it's in column B, row 16. So if I do B16, then we can close our brackets, and this is our formula in its entirety. When I hit enter, you can see we have a result. And B16 is the cell I've just now selected here, what has our number 2 in it. So we've got the number four. So we can see, or we can now tell from our formula that the number two appears four times within our range. And we can count that manually by checking, going one, two in the first column, three in the second, and our fourth is in the third column there. And then obviously the real benefit of having it dynamic like this and referencing the cell is if we want to change this to number five, obviously it's gonna update for us. And lastly, if we do number one, it'll update for us. If we go and put a number that is not going to be present in our range, so like the number six, you can see that we get a zero because six is not present in that range. Just to give you the full, uh, full experience there, should we say. So moving on to text, exactly the same. So all we'll do here is let's start with two again. So this time we'll enter the number two or the, should I say the text or word two. So we end our function into here. So it equals count if, open our brackets select all of our range that we want to uh, search, and then we then enter our cell reference, what is H16. You can also just select the cell reference rather than type in like I'm doing, but in this circumstance, our formula, our function when we're typing in, obviously overlaps where that reference is. So you, you could uh, use your um, arrows on your keyboard to get to that cell reference. Sometimes if you just know it and you can reference it, it's easier just to type in the reference as I have done. And you hit enter, and you can see this time that two is appearing twice in all of our range. And actually, as it so stands, the, the two twos are just in the first column as highlighted on the screen now. Point to remember with uh, using text, it's not case sensitive. So if I was to put all these into capitals, uh, as you can see there, 
or it's just due to do capital T W O, it's still going to count. So it doesn't factor in anything around um, obviously what the uh, capitals used in the word are. And also I can just do it in here as well in the text just to show you it works both ways. So it's not case sensitive, so you won't have a problem with that either. The only difference we have here, as we briefly touched on with number, is rather than referencing a cell, as we've done here with H H16, we can obviously just type in the word that we want to set or count for um, instead. But with numbers, where we could just type a number like so, with just a number here, what we need to remember when using text is that we use our quotations so that our the text we want to find is, uh, as you'll see on the screen now, is surrounded by quotations to identify to the function that is text we're looking for. And then when you hit enter, you can see it gives you the same result. If I just go back to H16, as our cell reference here, again, benefit of using this is if I was to change to a different text, it's now going to update our formula and give us the new count. So we hope you found that interesting. And for those who um, have approached us or reached out to us or even just thought about asking the question of how can I count the number of occurrences, regardless of its numbers or text, that has given you an answer and a solution on what you can do. If you have any more questions, please just drop us a comment below this video or as seems to be the preference, reach out to us via our Facebook or Instagram accounts. Links to those can both be found in the description to this video. Also in the description, you'll find a link to our website. So please feel free to go and check that out. And you can also grab yourself a free ebook uh, from our website. So if you go to the link in the description, you'll find all the information about that as well. Please, and lastly, if you haven't already, do give the video a like. It'd be greatly appreciated and really does help us out. And make sure you have, if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you are notified of all our new videos. Thank you very much and we shall see you in the next video.